Hello, I'm Jack Yammer. And I'm Professor Sudipa. And welcome to the Geography Programme. Today, we'll be looking at the 2004 Asian Tsunami. So, Professor Sudipa, tell me more about the Asian Tsunami. Well, Jack, when talking about tsunamis, it's important to know what a tsunami is. Tsunami is Japanese for hard wave, and it's essentially a large wave normally caused by an earthquake, although it can be caused by other things. In the case of the Asian tsunami, this occurred at 7.58 local time on Sunday, December the 26th, 2004. This was a tsunami with an earthquake causing it of a magnitude 9 and struck southwest of Banda Aceh in northern Sumatra. Can you tell me more about the causes of the Asian tsunami? Okay. When looking at the causes of the Asian tsunami, we know that this was caused by an earthquake. Now, Earthquakes are the result of plate tectonics. When understanding plate tectonics, it is important to know that the Earth's crust is not made up of just one solid mass, but rather of many plates, which are constantly moving and not static. It's the movement of these plates which causes the faults which cause earthquakes. This is not the slow, gradual, constant movement, but rather the absence of movement for some time and then the sudden faulting. So, now for a detailed diagram of what caused the Asian tsunami. In this first picture, the picture shows the normal situation before the tsunami occurred. Here you can clearly see the fault line on the bottom of the seabed. In the case of the Asian tsunami, this fault line was between the Australian and Eurasian plates in the Indian Ocean. The second picture shows the tsunami's formation when energy from the earthquake vertically vaulted the seabed by several metres, displacing hundreds of cubic kilometres of water. The large waves then started to move through the ocean from the earthquake's epicentre. This is where the tsunami's journey began. At this point, the wave was not very tall above the sea surface but rather had a very long wavelength. In deep water, the tsunami moved at 800 kilometers an hour, which is 500 miles per hour. When it reached shallower water, near coastal areas, the tsunami slowed down, but increased in height. Well, so, Professor Strudelpa, what are the signs of an approaching tsunami? Right, Jack. There is often no sign of an approaching tsunami, but seeing tsunamis are often caused by earthquakes. If an earthquake occurs in a coastal zone, it is often deducible that a tsunami will shortly follow. And as the crest of a wave normally comes after the trough of a wave, it will appear as if the tide is rapidly retreating, well below the normal low water mark. Do you have any examples of this? Yes, Jack. Tilly Smith who was a ten-year-old British girl who listened in her geography lessons, was a girl who knew exactly what the signs of a tsunami were, the retreating shoreline, and also the bubbles. She managed to recognise what happened when this occurred, and managed to evacuate the whole beach, saving many lives. So, remember kids, know the signs, save lives. Listen up in geography. Earthquake measured 8.9 on the Richter scale, and it is the strongest anywhere in the world for 40 years. The epicenter was off the island of Sumatra in northwestern Indonesia, but it's caused fatalities in countries from there to India. More than 3,000 have died in India, and hundreds of fishermen are missing. The police chief in Madras says at least 100 bodies have been found along beaches in the city. Seawater flooded the streets of Kadalura town, flipping over dozens of cars. 
At least three and a half thousand people died in Sri Lanka, with a million more displaced. Elsewhere, flash floods have shut the port in the capital, Colombo. The country's president has declared a national disaster and appealed for international emergency aid. In western Indonesia, a wall of water up to 10 meters high in places swamped coastal towns and villages. Government officials say more than 4,000 people died there, 3,000 of them in the province of Aceh. In Thailand, hundreds of tourists staying in the resort of Phuket are among those caught up in the disaster, and many are being treated in hospitals there. At least 300 people are known to have been killed in the whole of Thailand, with many hundreds more... ...worth remembering that more than 100,000 people have died in Indonesia alone. The deadly black surge rolled along the busy main road, chasing the morning traffic, shocked pedestrians fleeing any way they could. Carrying minibuses, cars, trees, fridges, the water is seen rising as high as the second storey, crushing what it doesn't sweep away. The roof of the mosque providing one of the few safe havens. The amateur cameraman took these pictures after filming the initial devastation caused by the quake itself, the world's biggest in 40 years. People are seen climbing onto piles of rubble and searching collapsed buildings, unaware that the tidal wave would arrive 15 minutes later. Earthquake measured 8.9 on the Richter scale, and it is the strongest anywhere in the world for 40 years. The epicenter was off the island of Sumatra in northwestern Indonesia, but it's caused fatalities in countries from there to India. More than 3,000 have died in India, and hundreds of fishermen are missing. The police chief in Madras says at least 100 bodies have been found along beaches in the city. Seawater flooded the streets of Kadanura town, flipping over dozens of cars. At least three and a half thousand people died in Sri Lanka, with a million more displaced. Elsewhere, flash floods have shut the port in the capital, Colombo. The country's president has declared a national disaster and appealed for international emergency aid. In western Indonesia, a wall of water up to 10 meters high in places swamped coastal towns and villages. Government officials say more than 4,000 people died there, 3,000 of them in the province of Aceh. In Thailand, hundreds of tourists staying in the resort of Phuket are among those caught up in the disaster, and many are being treated in hospitals there. At least Epidemics were a special concern due to the high population density and tropical climate of the affected areas. The main concern of humanitarian government agencies was to provide sanitation facilities and fresh drinking water to contain the spread of diseases such as cholera, diphtheria, typhoid, and hepatitis A and B. Seven billion dollars of aid was pledged by nations, corporations, and world organizations, as well as rich individuals. The USS Abraham Lincoln was dispatched to the area to allow its Chinook helicopters to be used to dispatch aid supplies to the local people. From the United Kingdom, the government pledged £75 million, with the UK public raising a further £350 million. Many skilled volunteers travelled from the UK to help with the relief effort. For example, forensics experts from the UK Police Service were able to help in the identification of bodies, and electrical engineers and builders helped to rebuild infrastructure and the electrical service in the country.